Hello YouTube. So it's been a while since I have last covered this project and now I'm ready to do some more modifications and alterations to this system. So this is the laptop which I started making about a month ago. You can see it has an Arduino right here. We're going to add some more programming features to this device as well as work on the wiring and also secure some of the components down. Looking on the interior of this device, we can see our Arduino right here. And I want to secure this board to the plate right here, which is which is a HDP cutting board. And to do that, I'm gonna use some Velcro from the dollar store. Here we have our Velcro. We have the fuzzy side as well as the spiky side. So this will give us a flexible connection and it has adhesive on the back. That might not work very well for the Arduino board. If the Velcro does not work on the Arduino board, we can use hot glue later, but the Velcro's adhesive should work fine on the cutting. To start off, let's measure out some sections. The Arduino board is about four inches, and we can measure that much out of our Velcro. As it is done on the space station, the fuzzy side will be mounted to the surface and the spiky side will be mounted to the object. First let's find a place where we want to put this. We need to leave room for a USB connector for programming, even though if there isn't room we can just remove the Velcro, but we would still like to have USB and we are also going to have to run power to this board. Also, we need to keep in mind that it flaps open and shuts to close it down. I think the spot where it is right here is where the cables naturally fall into place. Okay, now the board is secured together. Next thing we have to worry about is our power connector. This is a cigarette lighter plug, which goes into a USB outlet. This is what would be used to power the Arduino board, as well as the monitor. To start off, I either want to mount this in a position such as where it would fit properly instead of just dangling about right here. It's a popular choice for me to use hot glue for things just because how fast it sets and the relative strength of it. This is another application where hot glue would be used. Let's look for a place like right here, where we can fit the cables down, and they bend down. Let's add some hot glue to the bottom of the barrel plug. Which I would like to have for this device would be for the purposes of home automation. This would be using the keyboard to switch devices on and off. To do this, we need some output ports on this device, of which there is none. 
That's why I will add this connector. This is a 9-pin D-sub connector. Technically, it is incorrect to mount the female side on the port. Usually, it is done with the male side, such as for serial connections, but for this application, I will use this and it should be fine. To find a place to mount this connector, I will measure out from the side of this device. So, it does not interfere with the power connector. In order to make space accommodating for this connector, I will use a 5 16 inch drill bit, go through this area a couple of times, and that should give me a proper mounting place. Okay, so now I got this hole made just by drilling it out and then filing across the edges, smoothing them down, as well as expanding the hole. Now to place this actual connector securely into a slot. I will do this using two bolts or machine screws and drilling out holes for them to mount. Okay, so now I have successfully screwed in that connector. That leaves me with all of the wires of the 9-pin connector. This one will be wired to ground, and these will be data output connections. Similarly to how you would wire an LED to an Arduino, you would wire these connections in the same way just as a digital output. Though it is a two-strand wire, each of these strands is a separate connection, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight connections, as well as a ground wire. It may come that we have to use another wire for voltage, but I think that can be delivered separately. Now to move on, let's get back to programming the Arduino. I think we had some more work to do, especially as far as being able to type on the keyboard. Okay, so here is the Arduino program, which I have modified finally now for our typing program. Since we are limited on our number of keys, I could only 
get a few letters for the keyboard, especially considering that the space bar had to be reserved for that function, as well as the, the key representing the letter B, or the B key as seen here in, in the rectangle game program is reserved for use as an escape key, as in B for back. It's like this in the Xbox 360 consoles where A is select, B is back, so that's how it's set up. Also here in the typing program B is also used as an escape key. So for the B function I actually had to use the H key and it turned out that the space bar was programmed for the F key. So you can see right here there's a space where the letter would go. This program or these lines of code are copied over and over just with the different keys in each place. Basically what it does is it checks, see if it's low. If it is low, which means I had pressed the button, then it will print a letter, it will delay, and then it will check again. And if the letter is high, meaning that the key is not pressed, it will break the command or the while loop and it will go on. This ensures that when the key is pressed it will type once and then it will move on. So you don't... The delay function is so you don't get, get multiple key presses if you hold down the key. So that gives you long enough time for you to put your your stylus on the key and lift it off. So, as mentioned before, we have all of these letters A, C, D, E, space, G, and B, as well as escape. And, as, as I mentioned before, about the automation function to turn things such as lights on and off with the port that I added earlier in this video. There is also a command for this. It is not programmed for anything yet, for any function. I just wanted to get the typing in as well as start the idea for this. I will not do this maybe for another video just because that requires extra hardware, which I do not have. So this is loaded up onto the Arduino, and let's see it work. Okay, so here we are set up. We're using a different TV this time. You're using a different TV this time. It's a CRT TV. It might be a little harder to see than the LCD TV, but I do not have that LCD TV anymore, so we'll have to use this one until either I bring my other TV down here, which is very large, or I finally get the proper screen for this device. You should be able to make out that we have three functions now. The rectangle game, typing, as well as output for the automation. This does not work, though these two do. In the last video, I demonstrated the rectangle game. The rectangle game is not really a game, just more of a function. To start the rectangle game, you're going to press this key. This key. Yes, this key right here. And you can see over here we have our thing controlling controlling with the potentiometer. The potentiometer controls the motion. To get out of this, you press this key and you're back here. 
Now, for the new function, typing function, you have to press a different key. So this one, it takes us to this screen, which we can type. So let's type this key, and a letter has appeared. It may be hard to see on the screen, but we are typing the letter B. A is typing now. D. E. Space. Show the space there. See space and do you have any other keys? And we go back. So what we can do here to improve this typing function is to get better keys such as shift keys. So either way this involves adding more hardware, we can either add more keys or we can add shift keys. Which will be done in another video when we can add more hardware. This is it for today as far as this project goes, the Arduino laptop project. In the next video we will add the extra hardware as well as start on the output automation function.